I remember David used to、um, tell a story about this A Course in Miracle teacher called Tara Singh, and Tara Singh was a big fan of Krishna Murthy. He was traveling around the world to try to find an opportunity to talk to Krishna Murthy because Krishna Murthy was traveling around teaching everywhere at the time. So everywhere he went, he was trying to get a chance to talk to Krishna Murthy and never really got the chance until one time he said, "Can I just have five minutes of your time?" And Krishna Murthy said, "Yeah," and he said, "I only have、um, one question." Oh no, he said, "I have all these issues in my life,、um, and and yet I want God. I want God so bad. I want to experience God." And Krishna Murthy said three words. What's stopping you?、Mm-hmm. And Tara Singh went on and on about a family duty. You know, coming from India, I had a big family and responsibility, duty, this and that, and this and that, and financial, all of that. And Krishnamurti said two words and then finished the meeting. Drop them. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, when I travel and talk about things like that, people, it seems like it generates fear in people's mind around <laughs> dropping something. The reason that it generates fear is because these things have a lot of value to us. These things that we establish. And we call our lives are the things that we define ourselves with, and these are the things that we ge- we think we generate happiness from. So to drop them, meaning to us, to the ego, to the egoic self, actually implies dropping happiness and love, and it generates fear. And yet, it's such a contradiction because what is happiness? You know, this 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 retreat is called Dream Happiness, Happy, Happy Dream Retreat. So, what is happiness? We can actually explore this. Happiness is synonymous to a lot of things. You know, we can say it's synonymous to joy. It's synonymous to Lightheartedness to peace to love even, but we probably don't normally associate happiness with health, possibly, with connection, possibly. Happiness also is synonymous to. The awareness of dreaming. Happiness is synonymous to the identification with the Christ. If I am identified with both the Christ and the ego, I can be happy. Happiness does not exist in the realm of the belief that I'm a separate self. It just doesn't. So, is there any happiness in? My job, in my family, in my health, bodily health. Actually, no. From the assumption that I have a family and I have a job and I have a body, so there is no happiness in that. And I remember when I admitted to myself that I had never been happy. That was a moment that was so hard for me. To admit that to myself, and sometimes I say that, and people will say, "Oh, why? Be- you had a tremendous, like, 
tra traumatic childhood or you didn't receive love or your parent didn't love you? Why did why had you never been happy? Well, yeah, that's a good question. That was my experience. I never no, I had no traumatic childhood. I had a very normal childhood. But I I suffer from the possibility of death, from the possibility of the loved ones being dying, the loved ones being sick, suffer the possibility of abandonment and exclusion, the possibility of watching other suffering, experience of lack, restriction. So is there ever going to be happiness in this? In this? Really? If no, then what is so hard about dropping them? <laughs> Can I comment on that? Mm -hmm. um, when I started the treatment course uh, and I came to the part that said all the shallow roots will be uprooted, I actually understood that my attachments to places where I draw security will be uprooted and I thought that would be my family and I actually, it created a lot of fear, so it, it kind of corresponds to what you're saying, drop them. So my interpretation of what the Course was asking of me was pretty much to drop my husband and walk away from my work and everything else. But what I learned is that it's not the physical dropping, it's not the separation that it was calling for, but I needed to drop my attachments to it, my fears associated with losing it, and any guilt that was attached to it, of course, it created a shift in my relationship, but to the best. And instead of separation, it actually created more unity. So I think it's important for people not to take it literally and not to think that they need to drop anyone who brings them any happiness or any security in their life. And just to understand that it's more about dropping that fear of losing it and then allow Holy Spirit whether to keep you together or not, but that is not up to you to control them. Yeah, that's a good point. And that is what I really want to talk about, is a, a thank you song, you know. This journey is, is really not a journey of sacrifice. And, um, you know, people ask me, you have dropped seemingly things, but um, has has that ever been any difficulty after you drop them? Is that a regret? And I, at the point, you know, I thought about it. I thought, either my life gonna be a complete regret, regrets after regrets, looking back, or this life gonna be the most miraculous testament for Jesus. And I have to find out for myself. And there is no message that can be articulated with words. There is no real answer to the question of, is this going to be this or that in form? The answer is in the experience. Actually, A Course in Miracles has a saying in it, um, as an answer to you, you know, to what you just raised up, it says, "Withholding is dreaming, joining is is waking." So when we talk about dropping, the egoic interpretation is push away, block, connection, and that is not the Holy Spirit's interpretation about dropping because the Holy Spirit is always going to be about reaching out, about joining, about connecting, opening your heart up, and allowing His interpretation and His guidance to come through. It's always going to be that. 
And yet, as we follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, as we actually make the decision to follow the Spirit's guidance, there are going to be something that you have to choose to turn away from. And what you're going to turn away from is the egoic way of relating to people and to make decisions based on past associations and make decisions based on compromises and make decisions based on how to maintain a self-concept. <clears throat> and yet, I have to say, this metaphysics of A Course in Miracles is extremely deep and profound, and it takes a lot of words to explain the intricacy and of the, how the mind works. And yet, the solution and the practicality is extremely simple. It is extremely simple. Most of the people are complicating things in their minds. That's the only reason why we think we don't know the answer. It's extremely simple. And the simple, the simple answer is to follow the Spirit's guidance in making decisions. And I'm going to add one more thing here, based on my experience. The answer is to open your mind up to start thinking for what serves the whole. To the degree that your mind can leap above thinking what serves the self, you're going to be open to receive his guidance. Did you say to serve the the whole, the whole. And it's not about trying to find the right answer, because every time when we talk about think along that line or trying to ask that question, it doesn't mean that make sure you find the right answer or you'll be punished. It's about the thinking. It's about the willingness, like Maria talked about this morning, the willingness to start thinking along that line, because none of as we're trained as we grow up to think what serves the whole. We think about what serves the self, what serves my immediate family, what serves my most impor important, you know, half, other half, what serves me, what serves my body, what serves my f finance, what serves my security, what makes me feel good. It's, it's the basis of all the decision making. And that is the basis of all the suffering. So really this journey, I'm so grateful for this journey because from that moment when I realized that I had never been happy my whole life, when I admit that to myself, it was a very depressing moment. And yet everything started to turn around from that moment. And now, I can honestly say that everything is a miracle. And it is something opens up. It's this vision that started to open up to see everything is as a miracle. And that vision brings me a lot of joy and happiness. And the reason that the vision can be there is because the thinking started to change. The thinking everyday thinking about how to make decision, what to do, what to say, that thinking start to change. So when I say drop them, what really is dropped is the decision making process. You, you stopped making decisions based on an egoic self-concept. 
based on what you think is the best for yourself. Without knowing who we are, we don't know what's the best for ourselves. So it is extremely simple and extremely practical. It is about practice, though. It is about really applying that to everything. And I'm grateful because I was given a lot of opportunity to pray for what. What does he want? Because this body, this mouth, this eyes, this vision are all his to use, to spread his message, to serve his plan. There is no other thinking that is stopping that kind of thinking anymore. And when that thinking is in alignment, then there is happiness in the mind because there is no conflict anymore. Because the conflict exists in the desire, and when there is a desire for the egoic self and the desire for the spirit, we can't like be totally in the ego because who we are, we just can't be totally ego. We're part of God, and that's that's our inherent identity. So as long as we still hold on to the ego, we're split in desire, and we. Perceive split and conflict outside of us, because we can't see the conflict in our own mind. We start to perceive it outside of us. So there is an answer, and the answer is so simple. Go back to every decision. And go back to the thinking, and align the thinking with what what he wants. What he wants is what is what you want. What he wants is your happiness. What he wants is the happiness of the whole. You can't really drop anyone because they're in your mind. How can you drop it? It's impossible. It is impossible. That is the ultimate good news. Because that is the result. You see that it's impossible to drop anyone. And I say it's extremely practical because, you know, ultimately it's not even about understanding all of this. I remember many many years ago, David said in one of the、uh, conference in Europe,、um, he said, "A course in miracle cannot be understood until you reach the other end." So I thought, "Oh, how relieving! Then you know there is no need to struggle to try to understand this this metaphysics." And what I noticed is that. The other end is not far in the future. Yesterday, Craig and David touched on that. The immediacy of salvation. The other end actually is right now. As soon as you take the steps that's given by the Spirit, that's the other end. Because why? Because the means and the end are the same. And the the egoic mind doesn't think like that. We think according to timelines. So you, you know, spirit give us prompts to follow, and if we follow the prompts, we reach the end. After we follow the prompts, there's a time element in it. In experience, that's not the case. The case is the means is the end. As soon as you open to the means, you reach the end. Happiness is immediate. So where is the victimhood? If the means are given, it's not even for us to figure out. Means are given every moment. You know, sometimes people tell me. I just want happiness. I want peace of God. I want this. 
I want that. I don't want to do the the things that's given to me though. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, maybe the best way to put it is that I don't want the peace of God. Actually, that is a better way to to tell yourself because it's more honest. You know, it's it's better to be honest with yourself. It doesn't really matter what it is. You started to train your mind to be very integrous to yourself, because the most problem is not that we don't know; is that we we tell ourselves lies, we deceive ourselves. So it's better to start training our our mind to be extremely integrous. I don't want the means. I don't get the end. So I don't have to struggle in my mind to say I really want the end, but why is that not given me? I really like that not being a victim of any kind. You know, Jesus says everyone is called. Everybody is called, which means that everybody has received the means to be happy, and we can choose to be happy by accepting the means. <laughs>